Hey, hi everybody, Rapid the Rabbit here, welcome to the show. I'm very excited today, because today we actually have a very special guest celebrity interview. It's been a while since I've been watching things, and, um, and I don't know if anybody out there remember, uh, do you remember some years ago, over on Fox, on the Fox Network, a little sitcom called Greg the Bunny? Well, that's right. Greg the Bunny is going to be talking to us right here on the Rabbity Rabbit Show. You know, uh, back when he had it, when you saw his um, kitty show on Fox called Sweet Uncle Junction, and then after that he went on to IFC, the Independent Film Channel. But most of you out there probably don't know that he actually got to start right here on M and N Manhattan Neighborhood Network. That's right. So see somebody on who started and got his show business start on public access cable, cable TV, just like me. And, and a rabbit for that matter, and who went on to make it big. So we're going to be interviewing him by satellite today, and that's so exciting because I've never done that before too. I mean, I've, I've done um, I've done telephone interviews, but this is the first time we're doing this interview by satellite. So I just want to make sure everything's all ready. Oh, come here! Oh, come here! Ah! Yeah, hi, hi. So How do you like the chat room I got you? Well, yeah, it looks homey. Homey. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it looks like if uh, we take one long step, we're going to land in Greenpoint. In Greenpoint. Oh. Or Bushwick. Or the, uh, I'd rather land in Green Park. Right, not for the Bushwick, it's not born! This is, uh, we're all, are, are we all set for our satellite interview? Can oh, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, can, yeah, you, can yeah. you check and see if they're ready over there okay, in Los on, Angeles? I'm satellite remote here. Hold on a second. See, I got my satellite remote. Oh, okay. Right. See, if you could keep your shoulder and head out of the shot, it would help me. This is no good. This is not working for me, and I'm sure if they could say they don't want to see that. I did something wrong. I, I think I did something mistake. You, you, you were supposed to hit the preview button, not the program button. I don't think I was supposed to see that. I think that did it. Oh, for all your news, I guess. <laughs> well, anyway, it looks like we're ready over there on the we're over, ready over there on the West Coast. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is my pleasure to present to you a fellow, uh, a, a fellow Lepus, uh actor, showbiz performer. And America's favorite fabricated American, Greg the Bunny! Greg, 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 Greg the Bunny! Greg, 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 Greg the Bunny! Hi! <laughs> okay, hey there, there he is, Greg the Bunny! Hi, Greg! How you doing? Hello there. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Well, hey, Greg, hey, Greg there. Nice to be able to talk to you out there. And sorry you couldn't make it back here to New York City as we originally planned, but thanks for being available to do the satellite interview. I sort of got the idea from watching Real Time with Bill Maher on HBO. Yeah, well, HBO, not a bad place to, uh, to take, uh, you know, little, little incentives from. You know, I gotta tell you something. I, uh, you know, I was watching Sopranos one night and thought it might be fun to put a little puppet mafia together, but, uh, yeah, nobody wants to buy fun dip off a truck. And, uh, yeah, you know, you try to scare people with water guns and, and silly string, and it didn't have the same effect. Um, I'll just say we're not welcome back in Little Italy anytime soon. Which is, uh, which is a shame. Yeah, I know, Ra Rabbit, I'm so sorry. You know, you know you're not my home bunny, right? I mean, I, I would be there if I could, but it's just, uh, oh gosh, it's just freezing here in LA, and all the airports is closed, and, um, uh, well, truth be told, I just, I don't have a lot of money, and, uh, you know, I tried calling up uh, the, the price line, and Captain Kirk couldn't give me a good deal, so, uh, basically, what can I say, I'm stuck here in the city of the angels. So, um, I apologize, and glad we were able to get this hookup going, though. Ah, anyway, so, Greg, how's life been out there for you in Los Angeles? Ever since your TV and Hollywood movie parody <laughs> career has taken off. Do you miss being part of the showbiz scene here in New York City, or even being on Manhattan Neighborhood Network or Public Access TV? Hi, you know, life's good here in Los Angeles, you gotta say. Uh, I wouldn't say my career has taken off so much as it has, um, uh, it, it, it's limped favorably. You know, uh, I think, you know, the doctors say that I could uh, walk again under my own power if I continue the therapy. That's kind of how my career has been going to be quite honest with you. But, uh, you know, I do miss Manhattan Neighborhood Network. You enjoy it, thank you? Uh, yes, indeed, though. Uh, m and uh, really keeps us hopping. In fact, hopping all over their schedule. Sure, you know, well, it was great for me. The, the, the thing is, you know, when I was approached, oh, so many years ago, to be on public television, uh, I really thought they meant PBS. You know, I, I thought somebody was going to take me and introduce me to Fred Rogers. I thought I was going to be, 
you know, going to lunches with Big Bird, and, uh, you know, he turned out to be just some creepy apartment, uh, right off of Tompkins Square Park there, and, uh, yeah, somebody with a VHS camera suddenly started, uh, filming me, and that's when I realized, oh, public access television. So, yeah, you know, it was nice to have access to the public. Yeah, yeah, yes, you know, um, it's kind of ironic that I myself am still on public access TV, and yet I actually had lunch with Big Bird on quite a few occasions. That is a job, maybe. So, Greg, which would you say was your best television run throughout your career? Was it Junk Tapes on M&N, uh, Sweet Level Junction on Fox, or your own show on IFC? Well, you know, I have done quite a few series over the years. Uh, 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 you know, the show, uh, Junk Tape, that we did uh, here on MNN was probably one of my favorites because it was the first time I ever performed in front of a camera, per se. Uh, and, of course, the, the show that we did on the Fox Network was wonderful, if only because we were treated like kings, fed, you know, ten-layer uh, chocolate cakes, um, pretty much got to uh, hobnob with all the celebrity and, uh, you know, I got to really see the world. And that was a lot of fun. But I gotta say, the show we've been doing on the Independent Film Channel has been wonderful for us. I just wish that channel weren't so independent that nobody had it. That kind of stuck in my craw. Yes, that's right. And I know you. you after after uh, wrapping up uh, Junk Tapes on Eminem, you were on IFC, and then you got the call to be on the Fox Television Network. And then after you got canceled, you sort of went back to IFC. So. Did you ever see yourself as a kid's TV show host or entertainer when you started in showbiz, or did you just take whatever audience you felt you could reach regardless of age level? Well, frankly, you know, I just love having an audience. I mean, ever since I was a little bunny, you know, and I just used to find an old television set that somebody had thrown away, and I pulled all the guts out, and I, I just stepped inside of it, and I, I would do like a little lemonade stand, where for five cents, you know, I'd sing and dance and tell you old Fonzie Bear jokes, and, you know, I, ever since then, I just really had a dream of being on television, so, you know, whatever audience wants to, uh, to laugh at my brand of shenanigans, I enjoy. I mean, of course, who doesn't love sweet, innocent children? You know, because they... They pull your ears and, you know, they have those sort of sticky like hands with chocolate or prunes or whatever they've been eating on it, and they, their breath smells like a happy meal, and they watch the violent cartoons, and they think it's fine to just, you know, walk up to you and pop you in the face. And, uh, yeah, it's sweet. Human children are so, uh, <clears throat> so sweet. But, uh, yeah, well, I, you know, I enjoy it, and, uh, of course, we do more risque stuff on our, uh, our cable show. Yeah, yeah, yes. I, I know exactly what you mean, and uh, and and yeah, you know, and, and at the same time, you know, you don't do that mascot thing that I do here in New York. You know, here on the Robert T. Rabbit Show, we do classify our, ourselves as a kid show. Don't we? Don't restrict ourselves to that audience. If anything, it mainly means that we don't use any off-color language before bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, I often reserve to do that the right to do so if Eminem ever had the nerve to banish us to a late night time slot, which of course would be an idiotic thing to do to a kid's show. Or we would get to say the word duty. Well, you know, when we began on Eminem, we were on late night uh, television. I think we were on Monday nights uh, on Channel 16 at like 11 p.m. And uh, the guys who did the show, you know, they were adults. Uh, at least uh, physically, mentally, uh, it remains to be seen. But uh, so the show has always had something of an adult flavor. Uh, I, I like to think of myself as a pretty innocent guy. I think Warren the Ape probably fits the bill there. He's a very playboy after dark kind of guy. And uh, although I'm a bunny, I'm not really a playboy. So uh, it took a, it a bit of a learning curve for me to get in touch with some of the more harsh languages that we would use in the... Uh, your, your, your fannies and your peenies and all that kind of words, you know. Um, but, yeah, yeah, you'd be surprised when somebody writes you a script and, and, and sends you a check what you'd be willing to do and say on national television. So, um, do you think that fabricated Americans, when reaching out to the grown-up audience, necessarily have to use adult language or make adult references? I mean, look, like, over on Comedy Central, they had crank yankers, and on Broadway here in New York, there's that hit show musical, Avenue Q. And even on the Internet, there's the fun they pop that show. To answer you quite honestly, uh, the answer is yes and no. I, I, I think that um, 
No, you do not need to swear and say dirty words or do dirty things to entertain an adult audience. But uh, when you are in a competitive market, as the executive people say, uh, there is a certain stigma that befalls uh, people of fabric like you and me. Uh, and I think very often, uh, you know, what happens is, you know, adults who don't want to watch what they think is a puppet show tend to change the channel. And you sort of have to prove yourself to them that you uh, that, that your show is a more of an adult show, and I think that uh, a certain amount of shock value helps you do that. So, um, in some sense, I think, do you need to swear or be dirty in order to be funny or entertaining? Well, certainly not. But if you can say bang a couple horns and you can show poop screwing sex and violence, then, uh, yeah, well, I think your average pot-smoking 30-year-old is going to tune in. Oh, um, on your most recent season on the IFC, you did a, a music video parody of that hit by the Cars, uh, You Might Think. Now, did you know that the original name for the band was Richard and the Rabbit? Anyway, anyway, Greg, that probably means a lot more to me than it does to you. Actually, no, I didn't know they were called Richard and the Rabbits. Why would you change a name like that, you know? Unless technically there were no rabbits in the band, in which case I could see it as a bit misleading. That would be like you and me starting a band and uh, calling it, you know, Rabbit and the, and, and the Simeons. You know, it's just it's not going to work. So, uh, well, first then again, they weren't cars either, were they? So, um, anyway, what's up with your fellow cast members? You know, like, uh, take Warren the Eighth. You know, he sort of has some very weird hang-ups, unlike... Any other ape I've ever seen in showbiz? I mean, like, he's no bingo of the banana splits, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, like many other monkeys in, in show business, um, he's a terror, you know. Uh, you, you gotta know how to treat him if you don't want your hand bit, and uh, he likes to poop in his hand and throw it around, you know. But unlike other apes, uh, he's not very talented, in my opinion. I, I, you know, I realize I come off a little harsh, but... Uh, Warren the Ape and I were just oil and water, and I think the creators of our show like to put us together because they like to literally watch that fur fly. The Wumpus. I never knew what one even looked like before your shows, you know, until I watched, saw your show. I mean, before watching you, all I ever knew about a Wumpus was that they hid themselves in caves on Commodore computers. <laughs> yep, I had a Commodore. I remember, uh, yeah, I, that was a lot of fun. Uh, maybe soon we'll have a load runner on the show. Uh, well, let me tell you something. The Wumpus actually uh, did make his debut right here on MNN uh, back in 1998. Um, he was uh, character featured in, I believe, our surprise lunch episode. And it wasn't until, gosh, almost ten years later that uh, that he was resurrected from, uh, from the puppet closet to appear on the uh, IFC show. And, you know, Wumpus, he's an okay guy. Uh, he's very friendly and everything. It's just that uh, it's always tough with puppet monsters. You know what I mean? Because they've got that monster blood. You know, they're dangerous. I mean, anybody who's ever worked on Sesame Street knows uh, that, you know, you've got to sign a, a release to work there because everybody's aware that uh, it's like working with a live cougar. You know, I mean, Cookie Monster didn't get those cookies. He's going to go for a grip face. You know, and it's just it's the nature of the monster. As sweet as they appear, you know, they're capable of very dangerous things. And, you know, Grover, I mean, he could break your arm like a twig if, uh, if he was mean enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I know exactly what you mean, Greg. I mean, like a lot of my uh, viewers out there may remember way back in 1991 when I went down to Sesame Street to visit my friend Big Bird and then Telly Monster... Uh, Rock kicks me out of the fix-it shop. That's something, that's a side of Telly Monster that most kids out there are not used to uh, seeing. He could have been a football player. And, um, and, and, and also, uh, speaking of Sesame Street, what about Count Blah? Is he really that jealous of Count Von Count on Sesame Street? Uh, well, uh, Count Blah and the Sesame Street Count, they've got these playful rivalries been going back and forth for years. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Back in the 70s, uh, Count Blah was really the premier puppet vampire. And, uh, he, he was very famous, a lot of old exploitation films, and, uh, I, I really think he felt that, that he had a lock when, uh, when he found out that Henshin was looking for a vampire for his show. So when that OCD numerologist came in and, you know, kind of just plucked the whole gig away from Count Blah, he took it pretty serious, you know? I mean, if your one gimmick is that, you know, you're a vampire puppet, and uh, you've had the fangs installed and gone to all the trouble, it's, it's pretty upsetting when somebody else comes along and steals your thunder and lights, which, uh, which the Count literally, literally did. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, over on Sesame Street, I've been there quite a few times, and everybody knows how I'm very good friends with Big Bird over there. Okay, Greg, I'd like to share something with you that we did on our show some years ago. Way back in late 1990, Spy Magazine did a cover story on mascots, which they called America Kabuki. And I got several whole paragraphs mentioning myself in that article. Now, one regular feature in that magazine, when it was still in publication, was called Separated at Birth, in which they paired photographs of two unrelated celebrities or otherwise famous people together due to some ever so slight physical semblance. So what we did in our show here was a pair of picture of you with Bean Bunny from the Muppets. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that. Wow, I'm surprised that we didn't get sued when we were on the Fox show because, uh, yeah, well, I gotta admit, I bear quite a similarity to Bean there. See, that was the whole thing about the eyes. It raises a very interesting question. Uh, your viewers will notice that in that picture, which is how I appeared on my uh, Fox series, I did have uh, the blinky, blinky eyes there. And I gotta tell you something, for me that was very emotional, rather, because, you know, uh, here on the MNN I had the button eyes. Uh, several episodes of the Fox show, I also had my trademark buttons. Uh, but to be quite honest, the test audiences of the network television felt that my eyes were, uh, scary and bug-like. That was, uh, what they said. Scary and arachnid. So, uh, what did they do? They, uh, you know, they built me a pair of blinking eyes, they put me under, and they did this very costly and very painful surgery of uh, putting those things on my head. And i got to be honest with you, they hurt like a shut of a bee. But for the first time in my life, Rapid, I had 20-20 vision. It was amazing. And just when I got used to it, the show was canceled, and my eyes were repossessed as the property of Fox. Yeah. Yeah, showbiz is a harsh mistress, and uh, you don't want to marry it, because uh, that's a very costly divorce. It cost me two eyeballs. Um, yeah, I, I, know it is, I know how it is with your eyes, and like, well, even it's for myself, it's not perfect uh, ocular vision, you know. I mean, I, I'm seeing through the world through uh, ping pong eyes, if you notice that up here. Yeah. Well, but, you know, I got the buttons back, and uh, now I'm happy, so everything's great. Back to button-button vision. <laughs> yeah, I can't drive so good, but it's okay. I'll tell you something else, you know, Bean Bunny's a real sweet guy. Really sweet. Really made his bones over there down in Florida with the whole Muppets 3D, if you ever saw it. He's all over that thing, and uh, you know, he was kind of their great new hope uh, to be one of the new big Muppet characters, but it never quite panned out for him, you know. But he's a good guy, you know. We play cards every so often. Uh, you know, the Muppets in general are a pretty good group. It's just weird, you know, it's like, uh, when you're a puppet and suddenly you go to work for Henson, you become a Muppet, and they literally own you in copyright and perpetuity throughout the known universe. So it's a weird thing to work for the Henson Company, you know, because you sort of lose your individuality, and yet, uh, it's like being a Playboy Bunny, you're pretty much set for life. You know, they, uh, you know, they pay your way, and, uh, you get free room and board, and, uh, and all that good stuff. So, I don't know, I, I auditioned uh, when I was just a young bunny, but they found me just a little bit too, uh, too threadbare, and uh, I didn't really make the cut, per se. But I've carved out my own niche. Yeah, Greg, and you know, in fact, that's even more true so nowadays than ever before, now that, you know, uh, the Walt Disney Company actually owns some of it. So now, all those, uh, all those uh, performers are actually owned by Disney now. Hmm? By the way, do you share any other com camaraderie or identity with any other fabricated Americans or even any other bunnies in showbiz? I mean, like me, for instance, I once produced a music video for Bugs Bunny. You can even watch it on YouTube, as long as Warner Brothers doesn't have it ripped down again. Those Warner Brothers! Oh! Oh, really? Wow, that's great! No, I mean, to be honest, the only uh, other rabbit that I've ever really identified with has been the Velveteen Rabbit, because, uh, well, we're both made of the same fabric. This is 100% uh, pure Velveteen. It might be a little polyester blend, but we, we won't go into that. And, um, uh, you know, I just, I kind of share his existential crisis. I mean, uh, much like Pinocchio, I just really, at the end of the day, would love to be a real boy. Because, um, let's face it, they go to better schools, and uh, they're treated better, and uh, it's hard to be a fabricated American, am I right? I know exactly what you mean, Greg. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm not saying I'd really uh, go through with it, it's just everybody can dream, and uh, sure, it would be nice to be part of human society for once in your life, and, you know, get a good parking spot, or be seated at a, at a nice restaurant. But I guess I like who I am, 
you know. And of course I enjoy cartoon rabbits and uh, like Bugs and Roger and all of that good stuff. But, uh, you know, other than Bunny Rabbit from uh, Captain Kangaroo and yourself, uh, Rabbit, there aren't too many of us uh, working right now. You know, uh, Bean Bunny did have uh, his time in the spotlight, but, uh, yeah, I gotta say, I think we're kind of it. We're the, we're the last of, uh, of a generation. Hmm. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I, I mean, sometimes I myself, I can't help feeling like an old gray hair. You know, I ain't what I used to be. I'm just still what I am. I do kind of have a question for Cuppy. You know, Cuppy, I've never seen you without the cup. And, uh, you know, uh, my, my friend Warren the Ape, he's notorious for always wearing a, a helmet, and I've never seen him without it, and I wonder if you're the same way. Is, are we ever going to get a look underneath the cup? Well, gee, I, I don't know. Uh, Cuppy, Cuppy, uh, what do you think? Cuppy? Why, I never... It's like asking a girl if she's wearing Victoria's Secret. You never do that. Not down there. Don't look down there. Anyway, I'm just making me angry at anyone who would say such a low level that reporting is talking to in the country today. Nobody wants to know anything about the intellect at all about the low down stuff. What's under the cup? What's under the cup? Ah! Well, you, you have to pardon the cup. You know, he gets a little sensitive sometimes. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Show me the side. Is there anything you miss about living in New York City? You know, I saw on one of your IFC episodes, uh, um, you know, a scene of you uh, eating dim sum over at Hop Keys, or whatever the name of that place was, on Mott Street in Chinatown, and that happens to be my favorite dim sum place, too. Unfortunately, that place closed down over a year and a half ago now, and uh, even the Second Avenue Deli is gone. And so, many of my favorite old places, too, are starting to disappear because they're all being turned into condoms. I mean, condos. Condos. Uh, so do you think you might want to move back here again in the future before everything worthwhile disappears? I'm going to tell you something, Rabbit. I love New York. I really do. I mean, uh, gosh, even though the years I had there were very harsh, you know, I used to wrestle pigeons in the park just to make a couple pennies here and there. Um, you know, I, I know what it was like to live on the streets, but yeah, you know, I, all your best restaurants, 24-7, uh, wonderful access to things, museums, shops, and whatnot, uh, don't miss the rent, be honest with you about that, I had to fight a lot of pigeons just to pay for the, the little dumbwaiter that I lived in for five years on a St. Mark's Hotel, not a pretty time at all, saw some very disturbing images that I'm still trying to work out in therapy, um, but yeah, who doesn't love New York, you know? Uh, I would like to come back for an extended visit, uh, but I gotta say, you know, Los Angeles has been pretty good to me too. There's just a lot more room. Uh, a lot of bird feeders you can crash at when you're between gigs. And I made enough friends that now uh, it's pretty much uh, a little hutch for me wherever I want to go. Um, but uh, sure, New York will always be right here in my heart, along with all the iron and calcium from all the, the, the healthy stuff I've been eating. A little footnote to that, you know, I do miss the 2nd Avenue Deli, but, uh, you know, they didn't use a lot of butter in their recipes over there, so, you know, uh, it was hot. Um, you know, and Hop Keys, yes, we went to Hop Keys, um, we got sick after, that might be why they closed. We filmed a whole episode there, we had a wonderful time, it was delicious dim sum, and then we were all violently ill. <laughs> yeah, I believe Warren was vomiting for hours. So that, them closing might have had a little something to do with that. Oh, anyway, so Greg, you know, I, I know you guys kind of like uh, uh, wrapped up your relationship with IFC, but you have future plans in showbiz now, don't you? Yes, uh, well, you can look me up on the web. I've got a MySpace page. It's uh, www.myspace slash G to B. And I would like to point out to everybody that, uh, you know, be very careful that you type that this, that this, this address is case sensitive because, you know, it's got to be... Case sensitive! Yeah, that's right. It's got to be capital G and capital B because I find out that if you mix, mix that up, you get somebody else's MySpace page, which doesn't appear to be you. And uh, if you look at all my friends, I actually have Warren the Ape, the Wumpus, Count Blas, Seth Green, a lot of my buddies are on there and uh, we really do enjoy interacting directly with the people, so please send us some mail. So what are your, what are your, um plans, your future plans in the showbiz world? I do have some stuff upcoming. I'm looking forward to possibly doing a new show with my old rival, Warren the Ape, who I just can't seem to shake. Uh, we're working it out now. It should be a half-hour comedy, and uh, we're talking to a couple networks about it. Uh, my DVD, The Best of the Film Parodies, is a collection of my IFC shorts, which is now available from Shout Video, as well as uh, the original Fox series. All 13 episodes are on DVD for that as well. 
Well, yeah, well, but, you know, I do have a question for you as well. You know, after being on television for so many years and bringing so many people such happiness, you know, you know, what are your other endeavors? Would you ever like to possibly do a movie? Could we look forward to the to the Rapid T Rabbit uh, feature film one of these days? You know, if you're ever looking for a cameo, I think you and I could do pretty good in a road movie together. People have often come up to me and said, you know, that I should do a movie or something like that, but I have not yet gotten any offers to entertain. Oh, any Kravitz! Yeah, what, what, what? what? Kravitz just came in! Yeah, yeah, I was called the Seven Rain Samurai. It was a bunch of samurais who had very dull butter knives. And they're going around trying to butter people's food in the restaurant. I think it's a great movie. You're supposed to play one of the butter slots. You know, those little tabs? And Rupert's supposed to be from the rain, and I'm going to be playing a, uh, a loaf of bread. Oh, oh. And they're going to pay us in peanuts. Are they, are they going to butter your bread? Oh, heck no, <laughs> wait a minute. Here. I'm, here. I'm not taking it. You get that script, throw it in the garbage. I'm not doing that sort of stuff. That's embarrassing what they're trying to make you do in the movies these days. Well, was, it, was there ever a part in it for Greg? Uh, I'm sure he could direct the movie. Oh, well, he, I think he was looking more in terms of non-screen role. I think he role. someone to wrangle the rain samurai. Well, he was looking more for an on-camera role, maybe. He's an on-camera role. Well, I said there's bread. There's a, I'm playing a, uh, some bread, so he could be a role. Oh. That would be the on-camera role. <laughs> oh! <laughs> okay. Uh, see, I'm I walked into the devil again. Thank goodness for the script writers. Where are they? Where are they? Come back here. I'm going to get you out <laughs> I think we'd be great in a movie together, I really do. You know, anything from like, uh, you know, Rain Man to, uh, The Seven Samurai. Plus we need, you know, five, five other guys for that. But with Copy, we need four. I could bring, I could bring the Wumpish and, uh, yeah, we'll work it out. Uh, we've got to do some samurai training, of course, but it could be fun. Well, I hope, I do hope you get to visit us out here back east sometime in the future so you can meet Cuffy in person and the rest of the gang, too. But for now, again, I want to thank you for being over by a satellite and talking to us here for the benefit of our audience over here on Manhattan Neighborhood Network, QPTV, and Pophead Television. Thank you, Rabbit. Okay, then. And as I always say to all of my audience and friends, you keep hopping happy. <laughs> Well, I gotta thank you so much, Rapid. Because of you, I am hopping happy, and it was just really a pleasure of me to say hi to all my friends over there at MNN and all the shows that inspired me to, to do my own public access show. To, to be quite honest, you know, it's very important that, that people and puppets all be given a public voice to, to share their opinions and to try to entertain others, and truly, if not for the for the, for the availability of public access television, just like the Manhattan Neighborhood Network, I would have no career today. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I just want to say thank you to all of you for sort of carrying on that torch. And just keep it away from you because uh, we are flammable. Once again, Greg, thank you for being on the show with us today. And everybody out there watching, thanks for joining us. Keep up and happy. Bye now.